Hello and welcome back. Well, student, uh, today we'll be doing a chapter of 11th standard that is hydrocarbon. We'll see what hydrocarbons are and we'll see their classification, we'll see their method of preparation and their properties. Well, uh, if we talk about um, hydrocarbon, they are the compound of carbon and hydrogen only. So, if I want to classify hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons, they can be classified as cyclic and non-cyclic. The cyclic can further be classified as aliphatic and aromatic. The aromatic can further be classified as benzenoid and non-benzenoid. So, aromatic they can be classified as benzenoid and non-benzenoid. Now, if I talk about non-cyclic, non-cyclic they can be divided into two parts that is saturated and unsaturated. As you know, saturated means alkanes. And if I talk about unsaturated, they are further classified into alkenes and alkynes. In this chapter, we will study about the aromatic behavior, aromatic compound, benzenoid and non-benzenoid, both of them. We will uh, talk about non-cyclic hydrocarbon, that is uh, alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. So, we will study about alkanes first. So, I am starting with alkanes. The general formula is CN H2N plus 2. This is the general formula that is CN H2N plus 2. Whenever we study about a functional group or a compound, we always study about their uh, method of preparation, their physical properties and their chemical properties. So first we'll see its uh, method of preparation. Method of preparation. Well, before starting with the method of preparation, I'll give you a general idea. I'll give you a basic flow chart which will help you in a uh, lot of uh, conversions and uh, in studying about a lot of functional groups. See, if I talk about um, alkanes, alkanes on oxidation gives us alcohols. Alcohols on oxidation gives us aldehydes or ketones which on oxidation gives us carboxylic acids. Oxidation is the addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen. Carboxylic acid on further oxidation gives us CO2 and H2O. This is the end product. I give you one example for that. Suppose I have got a alkane, very simple alkane that is methane and I am adding oxygen into that. I will get methanol. Again, I am carrying out oxidation. As I told you, oxidation means addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen. So, H2O will come out and I will get HCHO, that is formaldehyde. Which on further oxidation will give me formic acid. Which on further oxidation will give me CO2 plus H2O. So, this is how oxidation generally occurs. Now, if I talk about alkanes, alkanes can be obtained first by reduction by reduction of lot of compounds like uh, by reduction of alkenes and 
alkynes by reduction of alkenes and alkynes so let us have a look at a chemical reaction for that i have compound say ch2 double bond ch2 as oxidation means addition of oxygen reduction means addition of hydrogen and that can be done in a lot of different manners I can use um, LiLH4 for, for that, I can use NaBH4 for that, I can use um, catalytic reduction. That catalytic reduction is generally known as CBTRs or Sandiners reduction. That's what I am doing here. I am adding hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst which I am taking as nickel and heat. So this is CBTRs reduction. I will get CH3 single bond CH3. Likewise, had it been uh, CH triple bond CH, that is an alkyne. In alkyne also I am adding hydrogen. Now in this case, two moles of hydrogen, they will get added. Nickel plus heat will again give me CH3 single bond CH3. So ethane is what I am getting. So by reduction of alkenes and alkynes. I can also get alkanes by reduction of alcohols. Suppose I have got a compound that is CH3, CH2, OH and I am adding hydrogen to that in the presence of nickel and heat. I will get CH3, single bond CH3 plus H2. So again I am getting ethane. Likewise, we can do reduction of aldehydes also but with, with a strong reducing agent, we'll end up with alkane. That, that reaction I'm not taking here. Now, this is how we get alkane. That is by reduction of alkenes and alkynes and by reduction of alcohols. Second, I'm going to tell you is from alkyl halide. How we prepare alkane from alkyl halide? Now, suppose I got a compound. Alkyl halide, as you know, is Rx, where R stands for any alkyl group, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, and X stands for any halogen, that is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, any halogen. So, how I can get from alkyl halide? First is by reaction of alkyl halide with sodium by reaction of alkyl halide with sodium. Now suppose I have got an alkyl halide that is uh, CH3Cl. I am reacting it with sodium. Two moles of sodium I will take. So two moles of CH3Cl will react. See, 2Na and 2Cl, they will come out as 2NaCl. What I have got is two moles of CH3. These two CH3, they will combine with each other to form CH3 single bond CH3 that is ethane. This reaction is known as Wood's reaction. So this is Wood's reaction. Again you are taking two moles of CH3Cl which on reaction with sodium will lose two moles of NaCl. So two CH3 they will combine together to form CH3 single bond CH3 that is ethane. This reaction is Wood's reaction. Now the limitation of this reaction is what? The limitation is only alkanes containing even number carbon atoms can be prepared by this method. Only alkanes containing a one number of carbon atoms can be prepared by this method. Why? Because you are multiplying it by 2. When you have got methyl chloride, you will end up with ethane. If you would have got ethyl chloride, you would have got butane. If you would have got propyl chloride, you would have got hexane. So likewise, when you are multiplying it by 2, you will always end up with an alkane having even number carbon atoms. Now in alkyl halide, the second method is by reduction. 
So if you carry out reduction of alkyl halide, like I have got compound CH3Cl, I am adding hydrogen to that. In the presence of nickel and heat, I will get CH4 plus HCl. So this is how I am getting alkane. So by now we have done two method of preparation. First is by reduction and the second is from alkyl halide. The third one I am telling you is from sodium salt from sodium salt of carboxylic acids from sodium salt of carboxylic acids now carboxylic acid if I talk about carboxylic acid it is RCOOH and if I talk about sodium salt that is RCOONA sodium salt of carboxylic acid the H positive ion has been replaced by NA positive see these reactions preparation of alkane from uh, sodium salt of carboxylic acid is known as decarboxylation decarboxylation and we have two different type of decarboxylations that is chemical decarboxylation and electrical decarboxylation so first i am telling you chemical decarboxylation chemical decarboxylation is carried out by soda lime we'll see how it is carried out now suppose I have got a compound that is uh, CH3 COONA my dear students when I am saying decarboxylation that means removal of carboxylic group removal of this group that is decarboxylation so here I have got sodium salt of acetic acid I am reacting it with NaOH heating it in the presence of lime that is CO together they are known as soda lime so what will happen this compound this part will come out as Na2CO3 and hydrogen will combine with CH3 to form CH4 alkane so this is chemical decarboxylation and by chemical decarboxylation you are getting methane so we can get alkane by chemical decarboxylation of sodium salt of carboxylic acid I can also carry out electrical electrolytic decarboxylation. So second we'll see electrolytic decarboxylation. Suppose I have sodium salt of carboxylic acid that is sodium salt of acetic acid I've got CH3CONA. I am dissolving this in water. So I am carrying out electrolysis. On doing so, it will break up into two parts that is CH3CO negative plus Na positive. Now this acetate ion will move toward anode because it is negative. So at anode. Anode in this case is positive. In electrolysis, anode means positive terminal towards which the anions move. So what will happen? Two moles of CH3 CO O negative when I'm saying O negative that means I've got an extra electron see oxygen has got how many electron in its valence shell oxygen has got six so one two three four five six and one extra electron seven because of which it has got a negative charge on electrolysis it will lose electron one electron now since you got two moles that means two moles of electron they are lost every single acetate ion will lose one electron you got two moles of acetate ion so two electrons they are lost as a result of that you will get a compound that is ch3 co o with an unpaired electron free radical you are getting so at anode what will happen the acetate ion two acetate ion will lose two moles of electron and they will get converted to two moles of free radical this free radical in next step will undergo homolysis. I'll show it to you. Here I'll write two moles. So two moles of CH3, CO, O, free radical. 
Now homolysis will occur on this bond. One of the electron will go towards CH3, another electron will come toward carbon. This electron will combine here and a double bond will be formed. That means in this step, two moles of CO2 they are lost. One CO2 from each molecule is lost. So you are left with two moles of methyl free radical. So you are getting two moles of methyl free radical. These two moles of methyl free radicals they will combine with each other to give you CH3, single bond CH3. Again, if I carry out electrolysis of sodium salt of uh, acetic acid, I will end up with ethane. This is known as um, electrolytic decarboxylation. What happens initially, it will, uh, when it will undergo electrolysis, it will uh, lose Na positive. You will get acetate ion that will move toward anode. They will lose two moles of electrons, two moles of acetate ion. They will lose two moles of electron. You will get two moles of free radicals of acetate ion. These acetate ions, two moles of these acetate ions, they will lose two moles of CO2. They will get converted to two moles of free radicals. And these free radicals of methyl group, they will combine together to form ethane. Again, the limitation of this method is very similar to that of uh, Wood's reaction. And what's that? Only alkanes containing even number carbon atoms can be prepared by this method like in Woods because here also we are multiplying it by 2 that's why by this method also you will get only alkanes containing even number of carbon atoms so this is all about the method of preparation of alkanes after method of preparation of alkanes we will move on to their physical properties so we will see there physical properties now when I'm talking about physical properties physical properties basically means solubility melting point boiling point these are included in physical properties so let us see that first I'll talk about their solubility solubility See, there is a basic rule of chemistry that like dissolves like. Polar compounds, they are soluble in polar solvents and non-polar compounds, they are soluble in non-polar solvents. If we talk about alkanes, they are non-polar. They does not have any dipole moment. So, they are not soluble in polar solvents like water. They are soluble in non-polar solvents like um, carbon tetrachloride, liquid carbon dioxide, liquid carbon disulfide. So, they are soluble in non-polar solvents and that too, as the number of carbon atoms will increase, the solubility in the solvent will decrease. That means methane is more soluble than ethane, ethane is more soluble than uh, propane, propane is more soluble than butane. So this is what you have to keep in mind. As the number of carbon atom increases, their solubility in the solvent decreases and they are soluble in non-polar solvents only. Next I talk about their boiling point. Second is boiling point see uh, as far their boiling point is concerned we know a general rule that as the number of carbon atoms increases the molecular mass will increase and as the molecular mass will increase the van der Waals force will also increase as the van der Waals force will increase the melting and boiling point increases so this is what happens in the case of alkanes also I will draw a graph here Now on one axis if I take boiling point and on the other axis I take uh, uh, molar mass or number of carbon atom. This graph goes like this. That means as the number of carbon atom increases, as the molecular mass increases, the boiling point also increases. It reaches a certain extent and after that it becomes constant. After that it does not increase because they are waxy solids that does not have very high melting point or boiling point. So their boiling point increases as the number of carbon atom in the hydrocarbon chain increases. Dear student, we know that in, in general, um, alkanes having from 1 to 5 carbon atom, they are in the gaseous state. 
and as you move from 6 to say uh, 12 10 carbon atom they are volatile liquids on further if i move from c11 to say c17 they are viscous liquids and after that more than c17 we can say they are waxy solids so as the number of carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon chain is increasing their molecular mass increases their metabolic force increases and due to that their boiling point increases here in this case i would like to tell you one thing and that is one of a very important uh, part of this um, particular topic suppose you have pentane and you have three different isomeric pentane you have got a compound like this ch3 ch2 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 ch3 this is n pentane likewise if it has got a branch we draw it like this ch3 ch ch3 ch2 ch3 this is isopentane and if you got two branch on the same carbon atom say you got it like this ch3 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 this is neopentane so you have n pentane isopentane and neopentane n pentane isopentane and neopentane now all these three isomeric form of pentane they have same molecular mass they have same van der Waals forces so they should have the same boiling point because they have got same number of carbon atoms same number of hydrogen atoms so their molecular mass will be same and they should have the same boiling point whereas it is not like this the boiling point of neoalkane is always lesser than that of iso and iso is always lesser than that of n now the question comes to our mind why it is like this and this question many a time this question has been asked among isomeric alkane which will have the highest boiling point or which will have the lowest boiling point and why see this neoalkane they will always have the lowest boiling point because if we talk about straight chain hydrocarbon an alkane which has got a straight chain has got a larger surface area if it has got a larger surface area the effectiveness of van der Waals forces is more on n alkanes likewise if i talk about neo alkane they are tetrahedral from the central carbon atom they are tetrahedral you have got a central carbon which is tetrahedral and you got tetrahedral carbon attached to it that means neo alkane has got roughly spherical shape sphere form has got the lowest surface area so the effectiveness of van der Waals forces on neo alkanes is minimum i give you one example say you want to dry your wet clothes if you spread them if you increase their surface area they will dry sooner whereas if you roll them and uh, bring them to a uh, shape of roughly spherical shape since their surface area will decrease they will not get um, uh, drier so soon so larger the surface area the more will be the effectiveness of the van der Waals forces so although these three alkanes these these three isomeric alkanes they've got the same molecular mass same van der Waals forces yet the boiling point of n alkane is highest because it has got um, larger surface area so the effectiveness of van der Waals forces is maximum whereas neo alkane which is roughly spherical in shape has got the lowest surface area so the effectiveness of van der Waals forces is minimum and that's why it has got a lowest boiling point so this is what happens in case of isomeric alkanes after this we'll talk about their melting point third property is their melting point like boiling point melting point also increases as the number of carbon atoms in the hydrocarbon chain increases so if i draw a graph between melting point and number of carbon atoms it goes like this say here i've got number one carbon two carbon three carbon four carbon five carbon six carbon seven carbon eight carbon nine carbon and ten carbon and suppose this is the melting point of methane from methane to ethane when i'm moving 
say this is the increase from methane to increase this from methane to ethane this is the increase in melting point now from ethane to propane as i will move there will be a slight decrease after that from propane to butane it will increase and uh, from butane to pentane again it will decrease and this zigzag will move out after say 7th or 8th carbon atom now the question comes to our mind why it is like this why the melting point is first increasing uh, it is increasing to a larger extent as we are moving from odd to even carbon atom and there is a slight decrease as we move from even to odd carbon atom it is because carbon is roughly tetrahedral in alkanes if we talk about carbon carbon atom it is tetrahedral in shape and if i talk about tetrahedral shape the carbon atoms the terminal carbons they will come closer to each other so the terminal carbons they will come closer to each other i'll show you how it is now say um, i have got uh, methane from methane i am moving to ethane in that case it will become like this the molecular mass is increasing so the van der waals force is also increasing and that's why the melting point is increasing now from ethane when i am moving to butane it will be like this here in this case you will see although one carbon atom has got added although the molecular mass has increased but the terminal carbons they have come closer to each other when terminal carbons they come closer to each other they experience prominent repulsion due to that repulsion the energy of the molecule increases and that results in the decrease in the melting point so when you are moving from methane to ethane not only the number of carbon atoms the molecular mass the van der waals force is increasing but also the terminal carbons are moving away from each other they are experiencing lesser repulsion and that's why there is a increase in the melting point but when i am moving from ethane to propane the terminal carbons they are coming closer to each other although the molecular mass has increased but the terminal carbon they have come closer and since they have come closer they are experiencing prominent repulsion due to which the energy of the molecule will increase and its melting point will decrease again when i'll move from uh, say propane to butane not only a carbon atom will increase but also the terminal carbon will move away from each other the repulsion will decrease so there will be a large increase in the melting point and this will keep on happening till 7th uh, or 8th carbon atom after that the carbon atom move so away from each other that this thing hardly affects them and there will be a continuous increase in the melting point so this is all about their physical properties in this class we have uh, just dealt with the uh, the method of preparation and the properties the method of preparation and the physical properties of alkanes in the next class i will tell you the chemical properties of alkanes also we will start with the alkenes the method of preparation of alkenes so that's all for today thank you very much thanks for joining and i request you to please subscribe my channel so as to get all the lectures on time thanks a lot